What is up, Colts Nation? I'm here with a very special interview, and it's Zaire Franklin, star linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, it's definitely been a journey here in the NFL, man. You've gone from, you know, late round pick, a guy that maybe a lot of people aren't really expecting a ton out of, special teams captain and special team star for the team. And then last year, breaking the franchise record for tackles in a season, man. How has been this NFL journey for you so far? Man, a lot of valleys and peaks, man. Um, you know, I, but the best advice I, I got my rookie year was from uh, Brian Mathis was just, you know, run your own race. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've just been doing, you know, the best I can. And, uh, you know, can't say I wasn't discouraged or, you know, didn't question myself at times. But, you know, thankful I saw it through. And, you know, hopefully I got a lot more to add to the story. So, you know, that's what I'm yeah. working for today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about some of the film from this past season and just how phenomenal that year was for you. And again, you know, some people probably didn't expect this. Again, your guy who coming into this last year never really was a starter. You fill in for Shaquille Leonard, one of the best linebackers in the entire league. And you're that's playing incredible. pretty much the whole year. Yeah, definitely fact right there. No <laughs> one can deny that. One of the best of the entire league. Uh, and for you to fill those shoes and, and be a very good linebacker as well. I mean, what did that kind what was that kind of conversation like with you and Shaquille throughout the off season, throughout the season? Uh, how supportive was he and kind of your, your taking over as a starting linebacker? Oh, uh, well, you know, obviously me and him came in together. Um, you know, I'm talking all the way back to rookie mini camp, um, you know, in 2018 was, you know, what I, that's what our vision always was. Um, you know, obviously um, we had two different journeys, two different paths in the league, but, um, obviously ultra supportive, um, anytime, you know, I had any, you know, I needed just that, that, that player's opinion, that player's eye, um, obviously he sees the game in a way that really only he sees it in. So whenever I could holler him and maybe get a quick, you know what I'm saying? How do you see in this, you know, saying a little correction here or there, um, you know, I feel like nobody really understands our game, uh, myself to him and him to me, like we do because we've been in we've been in the same room. We've watched every one of our plays. We've seen all the good and the bad from each other mm -hmm. um, since the beginning. So um, it's always good when you got that type of perspective yeah. um, with you in the room, um, and then obviously supporting you when you're out there. So obviously, you had a tough year last year, a lot of ups and downs, but you know, it was always there on my side for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so this past season, along with you becoming a starter, also is a big change for this defense and this team in general, going from Matt Eberflus, who just want to preface this, guys, we are not talking bad about Matt Eberflus here. We love Matt Eberflus, did a lot of really good things. But you guys made that change to Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley and also in your position coach, Richard Smith. I mean, combined, those guys have about 300 years of NFL experience, you know, <laughs> at a minimum 300 sure. years of NFL experience. Those guys have been around the league for a long time, and they've been doing kind yeah. of the same thing for a long time, that that cover three, Seattle three. You know, they've mixed in some of that man match type stuff and kind of really uh, revamped what they've done. But what was the the biggest change for you as a linebacker going from what Eberflus was asking from you to what Gus Bradley was asking? Um, you know, honestly, you know, it's a whole lot of similarities, believe it or not. You know, I remember, you know, my first and second year, we would watch a lot of Gus's tape um, when he was in L.A., um, you know, kind of picking up different things that he was doing and adding it to, you know, stuff we were going on. It's such a copycat league, you know, now. So it's really just more so you get a couple of different, you know, coaches that are different school and a school of thoughts. And, you know, everyone pretty much, you know, runs basically the same stuff with different tweaks. But, um, you know, I would say, you know, the biggest difference, you know, I feel like with just Gus um, and Coach Smith, I really just felt like they were really able to just really relate and understand the players. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it comes with the learning curve, you know, Flus was with us for four years. They just finished year one. But um, I could just speak personally, um, just the relationship that I have with them, too, um, the accountability, um, you know, the different pointers and different things that they just added to my game that just helped me play so much faster um, and just, you know, attack the ball and be able to make game changing plays um, just meant a lot. Um, and obviously, I felt like that was a big difference. Coach Smith, you um, He's a hell of a coach. He knows how to push your buttons oh, yeah. exactly where you need it. Um, and I think that's what you want and need out of a guy that, you know, is going to coach you hard every day. That's what you really want. You want somebody that's going to hold you to, you know, the st a standard and, you know, and not let you, um, you know, slip ever. So um, I think that's just really the best thing that they, that they brought when they came over. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Again, two very experienced guys. And it's kind of different from the last coaching staff where, where Borgonzi and, and Eberflus, like, yeah, they had experience in the NFL. But again, Smith with defensive coordinator experience, Gus obviously has been a defensive coordinator forever and a head coach as mm-hmm. well. So it's it's great to get those eyes in the room there. Uh, but I'm curious how the conversations went when it became apparent that you were going to be a starter. You know, like how much of it was you know, trying to get you up to speed, how much of it was trying to get you with confidence, you know, and kind of showing you a lot of things. Like how was that kind of process with those two guys getting you ready to be a starter this last season? Uh, I was starting uh, pretty much all spring. Um, yeah. So all spring, all winter. I mean, I mean all spring, all, all camp. Um, you know, when uh, Darius, obviously, I mean, Shaquille, when, obviously when he had, uh, he had to come back um, he, um, and didn't start the season off. But when he came back, he went to Will, but, um, I was the mic um, pretty much all spring, all camp. So um, just honestly, just learning, you know, weren't learning, watching a lot of, uh, honestly, watch a lot of Perriman. I mean, seeing the yeah. different things that he was able to do with them in Vegas, watching, you know, Perriman and, you know, other guys that they had in Vegas, I mean, in LA, um, and just picking that stuff up. You know, I think Gus did a great job of, you know, just kind of help, you know, you know, tutor me along fast so, you know, we could pick it up because, you know, as he teaches me, I'm able to help and teach other guys. Um, and I think that's just, a, you know, a great connection that we have. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't really, you know, for me, I, and honestly, even back when I wasn't playing, you know, even back in my first few years, I always had the mentality of preparing myself like a starter, you know, just mm-hmm. because you never know. Um, so even back in my first three years when I wasn't even, you know, playing on defense, I still would, you know, know everything, study everything. Um, I would be asking, you know, A Walk and and, and D and and Bobby all kind of questions, and I was really like their eyes and ears from the sideline, the same role that you know they kind of played for me to share. And um, and I even I, I'm, I'm talking about even to the pregame warmups. You know, I'm still going through warmups like I'm about to go play, you know, 90 snaps, knowing I'm only going to play special teams. But and I, my main thought process between between that um, behind that was. I didn't want to get to the point where I became a starter and now I had to change my habits. You know, I didn't want to, mm-hmm. I want, I basically just expected that, you know, I've always thought I started myself as a starter, even when I wasn't playing. So I just always kept preparing myself for that moment. So when I finally did become a starter, I really didn't have to change much because I was already doing things that, you know, some starters don't even do, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're going to get into the film in just a second. I know you're ready to nerd out with me and, and really talk sure, about yeah. some of this some of this fun stuff from last year, your career year as of right now. Uh, but going from go, like starting as the mic this year, was that always something that you were working on with the Colts? I know you did a little bit of Will under Eberflus and did a little bit. Uh, I know you played a little bit of Sam at times, too. Like, how was that change to playing the mic and again, starting at the mic pretty much the entire season? Man, I've been playing Mike my whole life. I feel like me personally, I just I feel like Mike is more of a personality trait. Yeah. And, you know, it is a prototype body wise. I mean, I, I could talk all day. I love to I talk all day. I talk during the lift. I talk during the warm up. <laughs> you, you can ask anybody that trained with me in Tampa. I'm talking, you know, of the whole time. But that's just who I am. I'm, I love to communicate. I'm a communicator. So. When you're on the field, it's second nature. I'm talking. I'm I'm aligning people up. I'm also, you know, like like I'm a nerd about a lot of stuff. Like I love football <laughs> philosophy. Like you get what I'm saying. I oh, love yeah. knowing, you know, oh this coach was under this coach and they taught spread offense and they like I I like I nerd out about stuff like that all the time too. So um, the idea of learning the whole defense, what, the way I learn defenses too is like I have to learn the entire thing. I like to know what the D line doing. I like to know what the DB is doing. Um, it just helps me understand better my role in certain things. And I feel like it allows me to play faster when I know what everybody else has to do around me. So, um, you know, for me, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just a mic. That's just who I am now. Uh, you know, depth chart and position stuff is always different. So you got to adapt and be able to play. Um, I think that's just something that was told to me younger early on in my career is just the more you can do, right? The more you can do, the better off you'll probably be to be able to stay in the building. Um, when it come that time so you know when i was I w- when i was when i was younger for myself it was i had to learn all the positions you know what i mean yeah. just just in case they didn't know how i would shake out didn't know how they would need me so um but again that was in my warehouse because i like learning all the positions anyway so um yeah yeah, 
Yeah, we'll get you at some fullback next year, right? We're going to yeah, get you at some fullback. I ain't going to hold you. I, t- I told Burgundy that a long time ago. I said, look, the day I'm moving to fullback, the day I use my Syracuse degree, I'm never playing. <laughs> <laughs> too much. That's too much there. You yeah, could be crazy nah. flying downhill as a, you know, hitting a, run- a guy in the backfield, but you ain't you ain't doing it. Yeah, I love contact, too. It's not even about that. But fullback, nah, that's just not on my – that's not in my cards, man. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it love it i'm glad that you are talking about all these different positions and stuff like that because we're gonna talk some covers and stuff and honestly again if if i need to learn some more here i'm all for it man i know you have more knowledge than me when it comes to this stuff and we'll we'll uh definitely talk a little bit here uh zaire before we jump into the film if i ask anything that goes too much into your guys playbook or or anything that goes into like actual terminology and stuff you don't have to answer. You can you can tell me to shut up. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> we'll we'll just bypass that. I'll try to keep everything a little more surface level than that. But yeah, we're gonna talk some of this uh, some of this film from last year. And and again, right off the top, this is just phenomenal film from day one. Uh, you really established yourself as the guy. And this is actually an interesting look here because you know we were just talking about you at the mic, but with the rise of the NFL and the two linebacker sets, you know, everything's almost two linebacker. Now there will be some things where, you know, you're the will or it, the Mike, you know, it kind of changes it's a little bit reversible there. So it kind of comes back to what you were saying about uh, having to know all the positions, but this is just an outside zone run here. Grover's doing Grover things and slowing up stuff and you're able to fly in there and, and make that play. But I wanted to highlight this play because obviously your speed is insane from the backside here, but, this big man right here. Look at Grover. Oh He's man, just... boy. Yeah, he different. I look him and Nine Nine down in there, man. Him and Buck, man. They are they are special. They are elite. I told Grover last year, man. I think it was after that Denver game, and I, it, it's funny because I feel like you know all players kind of start to make that transition from like, okay, I'm out here, I'm making plays. I'm just like you know, I'm making good plays. I'm making quality plays. So like, okay. Now I'm trying to change the game. I'm trying to affect the game. And I feel like, you know, I remember after we played Denver, um, you know, he blocked that field goal and he was just, man, he was yeah. just man, in there. And I was like, I told him, I was like, Grove, like, you on another level, bro. I don't really know too many, you know, guys. I don't think there's really many, if any, guys that's in the league that's really impacting. And, you know, I think him and Buck um, get overlooked a lot when it comes to the best tandems in the league. I, I, I can't put I – wouldn't, I wouldn't put two people over them, too. Um, just yeah. as far as production and actual like game film, those two are extremely elite. Yeah, Grover's one of those guys. Where, look, I get it. Everything's about rushing the passer. I totally get it. But when you have a player like Grover, where he's going to shut down opposing rushing attacks, no, of and, course. not not obviously just by himself, but like by giving opportunities to guys like you, like that is so valuable because you're forcing teams into second and eight, to third and eight, third and nine. And as a defender, life is easier in third and nine than it is in third and two, you know? Indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed, for sure. Yep. And then the speed, man. you know, it's funny. I was, I, I've been meaning to talk to you about this and, and we'll use the film as a, as a way to talk about this. But coming out of Syracuse, I was looking at your profile not too long ago. <laughs> We're talking about a guy who's, what, four, six, I think, in that I ran, 40. I went four, five. I went four, five, four, one. Five. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, four, four, <laughs> four five, one. Uh, so extremely fast, extremely explosive. All these leadership councils, super productive in college. And again, you could see it on the film. How how does this guy fall to round seven? <laughs> Man, that's the crazy thing about the draft. It's so funny that I was just uh, talking to our DB coach about this, and I was just um, we were talking about the draft and how it went the other day. And I was just like, man, it's crazy because, you know, I, and I get it. You know, you draft guys, you know, first, second, third round, and, you know, you're expecting them to be this player for your team. You're counting on them. You know, obviously that's why you invested a high pick in them. But I was just like, man, it's crazy how the draft always shake out because you will you could draft the guy second round and have him penciled in as your starter, and then it'll be the undrafted guy who comes in and changes your program. So um, yeah. I think, you know, that's why my biggest message to the young fellas always come in is really – once you get in the room, it really it really matters what you do in the room. How you got mm-hmm. in the room really doesn't matter. Once you get in, um, it's all about the impact you had there. So I just think I, I just think that's just the nature of the league, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But again, I think the league messed up. The Colts are very happy. The league <laughs> messed up. Obviously, you probably think the league messed up a little bit here, but th- this kind of speed at linebacker to get it that late in the draft, and and again, it's not like you had off field stuff that would have pushed you down. Like you were all these leadership councils, you know, a, a team captain three straight years. Like, I don't get it. 
I don't get it, man. But it's fine. It's fine. We'll, it we'll all, talk it about all worked out. It all worked out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the future instead of the past here. Uh, but again, I, I, this might just be the Grover episode here. Look at him eating those two, uh, <laughs> those two guys there. Limits that guy getting to you. You're able to kind of read and react, and then he also eats up that center as well. <laughs> Big bro. Man. Shout out to that boy, bro, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love this here. I love this here. But, you know, it's interesting. When you're playing against a team like the Chiefs, obviously you're keen pass on, like, every play because this guy right here, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this guy at quarterback. So kind of what are you seeing here pre-snap? Are you getting kind of a, a feel pre-snap that this could be a run? Or Because I see you kind of getting up on those toes a little bit there. Maybe this is a blitz. Maybe no, nah, it's no, nah, it's not. Um, you know, I'm really like you said, just re- keying, keying through my reads and um, just understanding that I got help coming in from the nickel, so yeah. I don't really have to overplay it. And um, you know, once I kind of see Grover cut the ball off or the ball bubble, um, just see ball go get ball. Um, that's kind of you know, this is early on the season, this is week three, so that was something I was just really starting to really like key in on, like. You know, it's different when you're playing in training camp. You you're doing it on paper, like you know. What I mean, when you see the ball, sometimes you just gotta go get it. So that's kind of what it really end up turning into. Yeah, the biggest thing you guys are gonna see in a lot of these clips, especially in the run defense clips, is when you see ball. <laughs> it's not just get ball. It's like <laughs> exploding after that ball. <laughs> like mm-hmm. like this close again at at any position is insane. But linebacker, like. Mm-hmm. It's a new age of linebacker right there is what that is. Like <laughs> all you guys can run a little bit, but this is here. This is, I love this speed so much. Like you could see it. This is when early in the year, I think a lot of people were seeing it with you. It's like, Oh, okay. Okay. Look what we got. Look what we got coming in for Shaquille. Like this is, this is good. We like it. We like it. So really nice closing speed there. I love it. Love it. And then uh, this is a play you and I were joking about before we recorded. <laughs> we got some pass rush in here. Uh, and I love that Gus used you a lot in the pass rush game because, again, that explosion and that speed and that see ball, get ball mentality that you have, you play with this like tenacity that really works for stunts and loops like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and what was really interesting is, you know, you're the you're the first in on this stunt. You know, typically, if you're bl- if you're bringing a linebacker, you're having that that defensive end be the first in, so the linebacker can loop around and get the sack. But again, that nasty you bring, they want you to be the first in to run through this right tackle, and you do your job very well on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right through him, and then he holds yeah. you, and then he holds yeah, you. Yeah, he, he he definitely tackled me by the collar right in front of the ref. Right I'm just getting mauled and it's all right there. The ref, ref act like he don't see it. It's all right, though. I get it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> worked out for us in the end, I guess. Still got the QB hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this, again, I don't want to go too much into like playbook or something like this, but the, was this something that you guys drew up for this game plan this week saying, like, hey, we think Zaire can come in and, and light up this right tackle and give us a good rush? Or was it something that's kind of always in there for you guys that you can whip out whenever? Um, you know, obviously, you know, something that we, you know, we liked on the game plan, um, but it's something that you kind of could see throughout the league. You know, a lot of, the, you know, guys run that, you know, with the, the pick with the linebacker. Some of them, you know, you pick for another linebacker and stuff like that. So just trying to really do your best to kind of, you know, give offensive different looks and kind of keep them on their toes, not necessarily, you know, make them, you know, give them a sense of what's coming. Um, so obviously I feel like they see me here standing here. They probably think I'm a man. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm keying it. And then, you know, on a snap, even the back, he kind of thinks I'm got him. And the next, you know, I'm picking. So it's just, you know, just kind of kick. Because, you know, for all he know, you know, obviously I got a huge weight advantage on uh, McKinnon. So he's he's ready for me to come next to, you know, it's, it's Quiddy. So, you know, that's just <laughs> <laughs> just pick your poison. It's kind of just and the best we could do to kind of keep the uh, opposing offenses on their toes. Yep. Yep. And before we move on to the game, you guys locked down the eventual Super Bowl champs. You guys, I mean, this is what the best defensive performance that anybody had against this team. Uh, did you guys just feel good about that game plan going into that week? Or what kind of went into you guys just having, you know, there's nobody could say this was a fluke. You guys were phenomenal this week and, and locked down the, again, the, the eventual Super Bowl champs. Man, it's, it's so funny when you look back and think back at the season and you just kind of think back to like, where you are week week to week, you know what I mean? The NFL is such a week to week league. Um, coming into this game, we were 0-1 and one. Um, we had tied with the Texans and bar- embarrassing uh, game against Jacksonville in Jacksonville. And um, you know it was our home opener. Um, you know we really it was something that we really were passionate about. We knew the type of energy that Kansas City was going to bring in, um, and I think that was just something that we would just 
we really just showed up and was ready and prepared for that day. You know, obviously at this point, all our goals were still on our table and mm-hmm. still, still so much excitement and stuff going on for the season. So, um, I think for us, you know, I think we had a great game plan for him. Obviously, Gus um, was very familiar with uh, Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. He played him twice a year for maybe four or five years, um, first with L.A., then with Vegas. So um, defensively, we were just very familiar for, you know, with the schemes and the stuff that they like to run and how they would try to attack us. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately we just kind of showed up and we made plays. You know, and I think that's just what men's games when you make plays. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is one of those plays right there, you know, getting that pressure there despite getting uh, tackled by the <laughs> by the mm-hmm. collar. Uh, another run defense here again. This time you're on that, you know, you're on that strong side there as that mic. And we're going to have you crashing down. And I love this right here. This, you know, 78 is reaching out to you. Some guys would go through him. Some other guys would dip like you do here and you're able to just work around him. So we kind of do a little bit of both, you know, dip and go through him a little bit. Um how big is it when you're a linebacker in run defense like this to get to your spot before this guy does? You know, how well, big is that? Well, I got one of my linebacker coaches uh, told me in my in college. He said something that really stuck me. He was just like, "Is is their job to block you? It's not your job to beat them. Your job is to hit the ball." So I feel like sometimes, yeah. and don't be wrong, it's, it's a lot of things are case by case. Sometimes you, you, it's your job to send the ball back. Sometimes it's your time to spill the block. Like, and you know that's what it is. But when you're in a situation where um, you got to go make a play. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like some linebackers or guys get kind of get hung up with always have to be giving so much attention to the blocker. They don't, you know, pay attention to the runner. So sometimes if you feel like you got that angle, um, whether that's going over top or going underneath, sometimes like you're saying, you just got to take it. You just got to be a ball player. The instincts take over. And like you said, when you see the ball, you got to go get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this quick read by you, too. I mean, it's like almost immediate at the snap here. You're popping. Are, are you reading fullback here? Again, you don't have to go into too much with it. If, I, if I'm asking yeah, we ain't too gonna much. Get in, we ain't going yeah. to get into too much. But yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, no, yeah. I, I mean, pushed yeah, it a little just, bit. Yeah, we just, you know, we obviously are familiar with Tennessee, so. <laughs> you know what? Personally, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say what, I'll, I'll think what I, you know, what I'm thinking here or whatever. Like, that. I'll keep it to myself. But, yeah, no, mm. it's a quick read. I love how, able you're, how you're able to get out there in that zone read uh, and just beat that guy to the spot. And then track down again, Derrick Henry, 250 pound guy that runs four four, insane man. These athletes in the league are yeah. insane. Uh, this one, one of your one of my favorite clips of the year. Uh, you're going against Jerry Judy here. We got the three by one against you guys. I think you guys bail into. I want to say it's cover two. You got or Tampa two ish because uh, you're you're dropping with it. It might be a uh, man coverage as well. Um, I have to watch it again here. Uh, but they leave you on this island here with Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy wide receiver. Jerry Judy. Obviously, you have this uh, 12th defender right here on the back line. Uh, but how are you kind of playing this when, when, you know, you're shading inside, you're carrying a guy like Jerry Judy, and you know, hey, they're probably going to test you when they have this kind of matchup here. How, how are you approaching this kind of matchup here? Um, well, obviously, uh, we're in a high red, uh, you know, knowing uh, the formation. Uh, can, I think, was it third? Is it third down? Like, yeah, it is third. It's third yep. down. Um, knowing that, you know, they got a, a ways to go. Um, and, you know, they put – you know, their prime player and, and, and close to the ball trying to isolate the mic. Um, obviously, when you're in the high red, you understand, um, you know, teams are going to attack us, attack the mic. The, the people try to pick on the mic. They feel like they get a good matchup. Yep. I mean, to be honest, those are type of matchups that I pride myself on. Um, nothing makes me feel better than making a play on a receiver because in the back of my heart, I really feel like I'm a DB sometimes. So, Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, nah, so obviously, you know, just reading uh, him, playing, playing him down the, down, down the hash, down the stripe, um, you knowing that Russell was going to give him a, a ball to play and just, you know, that's something that um, I, I watched from, you know, guys like Kenny, guys like Gilly. Um, just kind of keeping your poise um, and, and keeping, you know, keeping your RPMs down, keep being patient and having confidence, you know, through, uh, you know, the process of, you know, making a play on the ball or breaking out the pass. Um, and I think, you know, just and also too, just expecting the ball to come. Don't be surprised when he come like, no, expect your man to get the ball every single time and then just making the play when his name when the team needs it. So, oh, yeah, for sure. I have more questions about this one, but we have another clip coming up that is going to, you know, be better for the questions on this, but I love the, I love, love the confidence that in the call, you know, again, we're trusting our mic on this very talented, very fast, very quick wide receiver and Hey, our bike's making plays. So there's no reason not to trust our, our mic on those calls there. So love it there. Uh, we got key in the screen on this one here. And again, 
just that see ball, go get ball. I think that is yeah. just, it, it's absolutely like, it's my favorite thing to watch about your game on film is that see ball, get ball. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> cause when you see that ball, you're getting it. <laughs> well, I think it's just really, you come back down to trust, man. You gotta like, you gotta learn how to not only trust your teammates, trust your piece in the puzzle, but really trust yourself, man. Um, yeah. I think that's just one of the things, one something that I, I kind of, like I said, I got from Kenny, got from Shaq. Um, just, you know, just trusting yourself to be able to go make those plays, man. And just, if you're going to make a mistake, make it at full speed and, and, ha- and have no regrets. So, um, oh, you yeah. know, yeah. And obviously a lot, whole lot of film study, whole lot of film study. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, because you're going to take late on this, then the running back's <laughs> making you miss. And then and then Kenny's yeah. getting all the glory right here. You know, like, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, Kenny getting all of it. Uh, this one here, we got some goal line stops against the Patriots. Now, this first one's pretty interesting because it's a run call. It's a run stunt here. We're crashing inside, crashing inside. We're having you loop out, and it goes perfectly with uh, the designed run. Uh, I believe I talked to, I think, a a couple years ago, uh, Anthony Walker, and he said that a similar call like this was called Patterns under Flus. Now, you don't have to tell me what anything's called because, you know, it's the state secrets there. Uh, but I do love this run blitz here coming around the outside, looping in there. Uh, again, probably something you guys saw in film. I try something like this, and you guys wanted to create those angles there. Um, I, I love run call, run design blitzes like this, though, where you're where, you know, on defense, a lot of what you're doing is reacting to the offense. Mm-hmm. But calls like this, you're dictating, dictating the you're pace. Dictating of play. what the yeah. offense to do. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the way to play. You gotta, you want, you don't want to. I mean, I feel like there's times, you know, there's times for everything. To be honest with you, there's times to be passive, there's times to be aggressive. But I think I feel like the best defenses that you watch, um, you know, in football. Um, they are great at closing space. They make a lot of open field uh, plays. And also they dictate to the offense what they can and can't do. It's almost like the offense is reacting to you. And once you get that offense in that defensive mode and you kind of get on the attack, um, you're going to have some success. So, yeah, I, I love calls like that. And I love, I love like, defensive like mentalities like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's always one of my favorite things to ask corners when I talk to corners is, like, how do you go from – you know, sometimes you're reacting when you're impressed, but sometimes you're dictating. How do you kind of manage that? You know, because you can't just be dictating all game because yeah, there could be times where you kind of have to react to what the guy's doing and then dictate. You know, you have to be patient and then play at your pace. But other times, you know, be be that guy, you know, and go dictate. So it's always a really interesting thing with, with defenders is because so much of what you're doing is reacting. But you want to be dictating at all times. Well, it's, it's like it's like the chess chess game. But like you know, we always talk. We talk with Frank, and it's just like the game within the game. You know, obviously mm-hmm. everyone's elite competitors, everyone's elite athletes. Um, you know, but you know, I feel like the best of the best. When especially when you're going against one of the best, you know, I can't. You know, Floyd couldn't just throw a jab all day. He couldn't just throw the left hook all day. Sometimes you got to work through it. So it's just a, really it's the game within the game. Um, and like I said, that's what separates the boys from the men for real. Yeah, yeah. It looks like we got another run stunt here. Actually, I didn't even think I noticed this one before. Where Grover's eating that double, he's getting over to the other a gap, and then this guy's climbing to Shack, and then you're flying in here for this tackle here. <laughs> love it, love it. It helps having a linebacker like this when you're doing these kind of run stunts. <laughs> we on that goal line, we just gotta go. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So here we got. Uh, what I think a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people know that I tried to get the, the word out, but this is a, a technique called rollover and back technique off of the play action. This guy's play action here. We got the crosser coming across the field. Uh, Devonte Adams going deep and you're, you know, you're playing run, you're doing your reads and then you see it's play action and you're rolling back to that cross, rolling back to that cross, taking away that cross there, forcing Derek Carr to throw into quintuple coverage down the field. <laughs> the field there Gotta uh was it, yeah i know i really wish one was was a pick there but <laughs> missed opportunities you know happens Indeed. throughout the year <laughs> but here i again i love this rollover and back because it's such an unnatural position to to jump into is turn your back to the quarterback you know mm-hmm. turn that back all the way locate that crosser and just get in the way uh was that something that kind of gus and richard smith brought in or was that something that you've kind of always been doing here in the NFL under Flus and, and other coaches as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, when you watch a lot of, like, you know, one guy I watch all the time, uh, Bobby Wagner, um, one of my mentors, um, you know, trained with him for a number. And really, uh, 
Sorry, somebody keeps calling me. But um, oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I was wondering what you were cutting out a little bit there. Yeah, I got you though. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's just sometimes you know when you kind of bite up on a run fake. You know, I think before this, uh, I had a you know a, a collision with the fullback. I felt like they thought I would be a little thirsty for it. So coming in when I saw them line up, I'm like, look, I'm not stupid, and you guys aren't stupid. So I know you guys are going to try to fake me just to try to get something right over my head. So I knew that was the one that they wanted. Um, which is why I feel like he hit so much and was late on uh, Devontae deep. So, um, and within the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just love, I love talk, like just looking at, like, because this is like Gus Bradley and, and, and Bobby Wagner. Like you said, this is something that they've been doing for a long time is having linebackers doing stuff like this over the crosser routes and stuff. And mm -hmm. I just love, I saw with uh, with Bobby at times last year. Um, he was Bobby O'Karake, not not Bobby Wagner, uh, last year on those like deep over routes out of three by one sets, and he's like the weak side guy. He's running fifty yards down the field as the you know rolling back those fifty yards down the field. So it's always gotta, cool have, your hand, gotta have your hamstring loose for them now. Oh yeah, absolutely. But no, it's always cool seeing stuff like this where you can see the tangible effect that a play like this has, despite you know you're not getting any accolades for this type of play here, but. You almost force interception just by taking away that route there, which I love, 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 love talking about that. All right, getting to the next. Gosh, he should have caught that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who we was that? Was that? We were, we were like, just as devastated when it happened, to be honest with you, because it was awful. It was four of us right over there. Like, Man, we got to get those. <laughs> we got it. it was, was it Rodney McCloy? Yeah, Rodney Cloud and uh, and Kenny. Two yeah. playmakers, too, man. <laughs> Okay, we got against the Philadelphia Eagles and your new head coach uh, calling the game plan here on the other side. We got you spying the quarterback and obviously getting in there, making a play. Uh, how much of the game plan going into this week was we need to contain Jalen Hurts? And and obviously, I, I, I guess you guys can see a little bit of that coming uh, this next season when teams are going to be preparing for your offense this next year. Yeah, obviously we knew he was a you know had a great passer, had great weapons, had a great offensive offensive scheme. Um, you know, I feel like for us, it's just, you know, for them, just kind of keeping them off track, you know, showing them some looks that they weren't ready for. And obviously, you know, trying to make sure we keep him in the pocket and keep him contained on, uh, you know, got to have his situation. So, um, obviously played great against them for the most majority of the game. They end up coming out on top, but, um, you know, definitely, you know, one of our better performances as a defense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A really good game. And, and honestly, I'm sure that was a lot of why, uh, you know, Shane Steichen and Gus Bradley kind of clicked a lot and were able to bring him back this year. It was like, hey, you guys kicked my butt last year. <laughs> you know, your defense kicked my butt. Let's let's definitely run that back there. So that was that was a really great week. Now, this is the clip. This is the <laughs> clip right here. This is the clip. The one after this, actually, I think is your forced fumble. Uh, <laughs> but this is the one I want to talk about that I love. I think this is uh, your best play of the season. I think it's one of the best plays by the by the defense this year. It's just the, these plays are so pretty here. We're talking the same thing that happened in that Broncos game. They're leaving you on that island, the three by one. They're trying to isolate the mic. They're trying to attack you. And this honestly is a good ball. Like it's a pretty good ball, but phenomenal play, man. Just playing through those hands, playing patient, like you said. I mean, I, I know it's easy to say be patient and and don't panic and wait for the hands and go through them but like how much repetition does goes into being ready to make plays like this when it comes down to it in game time man well it's a drill that we work on you know almost every week um so shout out to coach smith obviously for having us prepared and you know putting us in situations that you know come up in the game um and you know like i said you know sometimes you just gotta Knowing that I'm on three, um, I think they went tempo this play, if I'm not mistaken. Again, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that uh, Schultz was, you know, one of Dak's favorite targets in the red zone, um, feeling like, you know, they were going to try to put me on an island and, you know, do their best to, you know, get their player the ball. Um, and like I said, just expecting to make that play, um, just having poise all the way through. He, he threw a great back shoulder. Um, but you know, like I said, you know, the play is never over till it's over. So just keep fighting, you know, through the ball, through the pocket. And, um, I was able to get it out. Yeah. This is something that Kenny's done a lot too in his career, which is another reason why I've always loved Kenny there in the slot is, you know, there are, you know, there's, I don't even want to call this an ugly win because it's not an ugly win. It's a gorgeous play, but there are plays that don't look as pretty. You know, when you're jumping a route, knocking it down, it looks great. These ones, it looks like, oh, the, the receiver dropped it. It's not really on the, on the defensive back, but getting that hand in there, 
is just it's such a great play and then playing through it like that um uh, always great to see there and i and i love how i love the timing here with your hands here and you said you guys rep that a lot in practice but just mm. the timing of the second that ball hits his hand your hands in there you know it's just mm. getting that hand in there i love mm. it it's such a good play man yeah that that is so nice there that's so nice all right, we'll talk some some forced fumble here for a second, and then we'll get to I think like one more after this, and then we'll 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 call it for you guys there. But uh, yeah, this this big forced fumble against Philadelphia Eagles, Ire, like this was uh, your Shaquille mo- your Shaquille Leonard moment, you know your <laughs> your peanut punch. <laughs> Come on, don't give it to me that. Don't do, don't give me that. <laughs> This, but this was very reminiscent of him. You know, you come in here, you got the, the left arm holding him up, and then you come in, or no, the right arm holding him up, and you come in yeah. with that left and punch it out. <laughs> yeah, no question. Man, that was just, you know, just one of them situations, emotions high, playing against, you know, my hometown team, you know, the play team yeah. needed to play. You know, I was just kind of just obsessed to try to get that ball back. Um, you know, was able to fly in and make a play, um, you know, try to help the team get a win, man. Just super turned up about that. Oh yeah, I think I actually have another punch out here. I think yeah, you got the punch out on this one too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that, dude. Mm. I'm telling you, man. Shaquille's got to watch out for his force. He took <laughs> he took his tackle record. Are you coming for his force fumble record? Nah, man. We gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna set the tone together, man. We gonna set it together, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. If only Ronnie would have got that block, I was catching Isaiah there. In, nah, in I, I, get, I get on Isaiah about this all the time. I said, Isaiah, bro, I didn't see you hurdle dudes mid stride. I didn't see you do the most ridiculous things I ever seen. How you let Adam Thielen tackle you in the open field? I tell him about this almost every. I'm gonna tell him about it tomorrow when I see him again, man. But obviously, Isaiah is a special, special player. I'm like, man, you supposed to make me look good. You supposed to pick it up in crib here. So, but no, I know, I know what he's gonna do when he get the ball. Every time Isaiah got the ball in his hands, it's like, I hold my breath. Oh, man. Yeah, I've talked to Isaiah a couple of times. And what I know about Isaiah is uh, this will be the clip of the year that he remind, remembers the most. It won't be any oh, no kind question. of pass breakup. It won't no be question. any, like, no near question. interception. It won't be <laughs> a big kick return. Or, it won't be that. Yeah, it'll be this. It'll be That's this what he remembers. Here, for sure. For sure. <laughs> He's, he's just wired differently, man. I love him. I love him. All right. Last one I want to talk about here was this uh, another DB kind of play from you. Like you said, you know, you're, <laughs> you got what Keenan Allen right here. Is it Keenan mm-hmm. Allen? Yeah. Keenan Allen run the little whip route on you. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing on you. You know, you could have heard this. I should have picked it. I actually get mad every time I look at it because I should have picked it. I ain't gonna lie. Herbert threw a worse, a worse ball than I thought he would. He was looking and I'm, I'm thinking he going to throw it outside and low and away. That's how Matt always threw the ball. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. like, all right, just break to where I thought it was. Then he threw it right to where I was at. I was like, damn. So, <laughs> But at least I got my hand on it. So, um, yeah, obviously. And then my boy Rod T with the, uh, with the catch of the year. So, Yeah, yeah. He, you know, you get the assist on this one. You get the assist on the yeah. last couple of ones. That's yeah, what this sure. is. For sure. <laughs> Love that play. Love it. Uh, getting that, that wide receiver locked down yet again. And, you know, do you ever see people, you know – how do I want to phrase this? Pro football focus is a big thing. <laughs> you know, pro football, the grades and, you know, if someone were to look at the grades, they would say, ah, oh, Zaire Franklin, bad coverage linebacker. But if you watch the film, obviously that's not true whatsoever. Do you kind of have to ignore some of the, the comments and stuff with the rise of, you know, those arbitrary grades that aren't even what is really in the building with you guys? Man, you know, honestly, to be honest, I take it, you know, with a grain of salt. I mean, because for one, you know, they'll grade you down on something that wasn't your fault. I had nothing to do with it. Now they're saying, I'm like, what are you talking about? But um, at the same time, you know, as somebody who, you know, from Philly, you know, I'm a I'm a super fan at heart deep down. You know what I mean? You know, I know you've been seeing me talk about my sixes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand, you know what I mean? And I understand, you know, it's really about narratives. It's about, you know, you know, I'm making plays and stuff like that. So, honestly, you know, I look at it, you know, I know my game. I got confidence in my game. Obviously, I'm looking forward to I, I, the criticism I take is from myself, my teammates, and from my coaches. However, you know, you see you see the different stuff. And to me, it's just kind of more motivation. Like, okay, they say I can't cover, and I'm going to show them I can cover. They say I can't do this. I say I can, you know, so I'm gonna go do this. So it's really just fuel to the fire. But I don't, I don't take none of it too seriously, though. Yeah, yeah. So I will ask you this again. I'm film guy, and you look at me, and I'm not a guy who played in the NFL. Obviously, like, does it annoy you a little bit when you see film guys that 
aren't in the building with you and maybe don't, you know, don't know what's going on. And they try to assign blame and stuff like that to things that they don't really know. Does that annoy you just a little bit there? I mean, yeah, it do. Cause it'd be like, you, you wrong. And it's like, yeah. you'd be wanting to quote it and be like, no, this is X, Y, but now you're giving up secrets or, right. you know what I'm saying? You kind of fuel into the fire a little bit too. But uh, like I said, I mean, look, it, it, it's, it's, it's man in a real type of situation, man. Look, when you on the field, when you in the middle of that, I'm not even hearing the crowd. I'm not hearing that all. Right. I'm, all I'm focusing on on this, but you know, I definitely, you know, you, you want you want the narrative about your name and about your game to be positive. You know, that's that's all of us. We all human, so um, that's what we all really striving for. So, um, you know, there's been times where you know you might see something or you might think see opinions about you, um, and you be like, what? But for me, you know, what I mean, you just got to add it to the fire, man. Add it, yeah. add it to whatever it is, and look, go prove them wrong because you won't get another opportunity. So. Absolutely. I, I give you full permission if I get something wrong. If I get something wrong, Don't I want you to... Don't say it, because now, you open the door, so now when I quote it, I'll be like, Zach, you tripping. Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I give, I give. You could tell all everyone in the in the room there. You know, you, you call me out because I'm here to learn, guys. I'm here to learn. I'm here to be wrong. You know, I love being wrong. You know, I, and maybe I'm you guys on Twitter and stuff like that don't think that, but like a big part of talking football and learning football is being absolutely wrong. No you question. Know, no me question. from 2018, I have no clue what the hell I'm talking about on this episode, even. You know, me from 2018. So, uh, you know, it, it's obviously a big learning thing. But yeah, you guys have full freedom to call me out either in the DMs <laughs> or on Twitter, uh, correct me and stuff. I know there was there was a couple of things last year where <laughs> I talked about certain coverages that I thought Gus was running just because I've studied a lot of Gus stuff. And I saw Bobby Okereke liking them and then unliking them real quick. So I was like, oh, okay, I might have got something. Oh, Bobby nasty. So now I got to tell Bobby about him still, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I don't even know if he, he might have just been scrolling by and accidentally hit something, but I'm going to take that as like, Zach, you're on the right track, you know? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Sire, man, I appreciate you joining and talking some film. One thing I wanted to ask you before we close it off here, though, you know, it's that new era of Colts football. We got a new quarterback. We got a really young draft class coming in. You know, obviously we don't want to talk too much about the past or the last couple of seasons at all, but it feels like this new era of Colts football coming in with the new quarterback and new coaching staff. You know, what can we kind of expect from not only the Colts, but from you this upcoming season? Um, you know, obviously uh breath of fresh air, you know, definitely a different dynamic, um, new team, uh, I know. I think we're just looking forward to competing, man. You know, last time I looked at, I remember sitting in a, uh, I remember sitting in a cafeteria my rookie year. We were a one and five. I'm, I'm sitting there eating lunch. I'm watching TV. Everybody on TV's got us ranked 32. They saying we're terrible. I remember looking at Andrew. He's walking by. He's just eating his food. He's looking at it too. They telling Andrew that he sucks. We just in there. Next thing you know, we go win 10 straight. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just feel like the league, is, as much as I love it, you know, it's all about narratives and everybody going to talk about what's current. But guess what? Um, if everything was all set in stone, there'd be no reason to play the games. You know yep. what I mean? So um, just looking forward to another opportunity with a new group of guys, man. Um, I can tell you what, man, that locker room is fun, man. The locker room is, is turned up, man. We got a good energy in there. Um, it's been, you know, the best that has, you know, been for a little minute too. So it's, that's that's refreshing. Um, but we still young. We just got together. Like I said, the rookies only been in the building for like two days. So it's a lot of gelling and a whole lot of growing we got to do. But um, a lot of reasons to be excited and look forward to the season, man. I, I really can't wait. Can't wait for another opportunity for us to prove ourselves. So Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Colts fans, if you guys don't know him already, Zaire Franklin, he's going to be another breakout player for the Indianapolis Colts again next year. You know, this last year was the breakout. The next year is going to be the breakout. The year after that is going to be the breakout. It's going to be constant breakout. I'm about to say, what's after the breakout? After the breakout, it's <laughs> solidifying. I yeah, guess. yeah. We're going to keep breaking out. You know, we're going to keep breaking up, but, pushing those boundaries, keep pushing it up and stuff like that. But Zaire Franklin, a guy who's gone from seventh round pick, special team star, multiple time captain to now starting linebacker for Indianapolis Colts. Make sure you guys are tuning in to more episodes of Locked on Colts and HorseshoeHuddle.com's podcast. And also make sure you're following at Ziggy Smalls on Twitter. I don't know why you guys aren't following him. <laughs> he talks about his Philadelphia 76ers on there, which was, you know, <laughs> no, nah, that was painful. We, 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 we hiatus on that. that my feelings still hurt, but it's all right though. <laughs> all right, Colts fans. I will catch you guys later this week. And again, Zaire, thank you, man, for joining us. Of course. Appreciate you, gang.